We've all seen films or posters or propaganda of various kinds about this business of road safety. And we've heard it suggested, usually quite wrongly, that a lot of this propaganda is put out by ministries or officials who've never ridden a motorcycle in their lives. So we'd like to emphasize right at the start that this is a film about motorcycling that's made entirely by motorcyclists, written and produced by motorcyclists, photographed by motorcyclists, and acted entirely by motorcyclists who you'll see in a moment arriving for their daily work as motorcycle repairers, testers, salesmen and the like. Nobby Clark, motorcycle club official. Bill Quinn, TT replica winner, Brooklyn's record holder, seasoned veteran and everyday rider for over 30 years. Eric Wilson, twice a gold medal winner in the International Six Days Trial. Keith Walker, trials rider and short circuit racer. Ken Morris, Isle of Man TT rider. And the rest, more than 50 keen everyday motorcyclists. All these experienced men are fond of motorcycle sport in one form or another trials or racing, solo or with sidecar, but they all can find their spectacular riding to the proper place, the racetrack or the trial section. On public roads you can find a quieter or less conspicuous bunch of riders, and they often have a quiet smile when they see a noisy rider showing off on the road. This kind of demonstration is a poor advertisement for the rider and for the whole motorcycling movement. Before we go on to show you a few riding hints, we'd like to mention that in the course of this film we've staged a few crashes. We've done this partly to help illustrate certain points and partly to make it more interesting. But because of these fake accidents, don't run away with the idea that motorcycling is a dangerous pastime. There's nothing dangerous about this. Any possible danger depends on the user. And this, remember, is a lethal weapon, if you like to use it that way. More pedestrians become road casualties than any other class of road user. Not just because there are more of them, but because they're more vulnerable. This kind of thing happens daily. And the pedestrian usually comes off worst. Pedal cyclists and motorcyclists are vulnerable too. So it's up to them to take extra care to keep out of trouble. And we're going to try to show you how by demonstrating some of the things we've learnt the hard way from actual experience. And remember that every single one of the incidents you're going to see isn't just a theoretical possibility. It's something that's actually happened to one of us or to someone we know during long years of hard riding. First, we'll deal with maintenance. A good rider keeps his machine in safe, roadworthy condition. Look after the brakes. Keep both brakes in good adjustment. Take care of the control cables. Watch the brake cable here and replace it if it shows signs of fraying. Otherwise, when you pull it hard in an emergency, this is what's likely to happen. Watch the throttle cable too. We can remember nasty experiences when the throttle stuck open and we've learned to give regular attention to the cable and to renew it at the first signs of wear. A badly adjusted chain can cause a bad moment if it comes off and wraps itself round your rear wheel. Don't ride with a chain like this. Adjust it until there's only the right amount of slack. Like this. Check your tyre pressures. Wrong pressures cause unsteady steering. And after all, it's not a lot of trouble to inflate a soft tyre. Provided your lungs are in good condition. And don't ride a yard with a cut tyre. Bald tyres like this encourage skidding and in any case cause frequent punctures. Bad tyres are a nuisance and a danger. Renew them before they're too far gone. Test the lights and pay particular attention to the dip beam. See that it dips properly and adjust the setting so that you don't cause dazzle. Now a few points about clothing. The experienced rider invests in hard-wearing practical gear. No need to try to be glamorous like this. A good, strong, waterproof coat's the main essential, preferably on the large side, 
so as to tuck well in round the knees. And tough, sensible gloves, and it's a good tip to sew on a scrap of wash leather for wiping rain off goggles. This type of glove, treated with a reflecting material, will help to make sure that your hand signals are visible by day or night. In really bad weather, these waders help to keep the shoes and trousers clean and dry. If you wear a scarf, tuck it well in. A loose scarf or a trailing belt can cause trouble if it catches in the chain. Another tip, a towel round the neck soaks up rain. And if you're caught with a thin coat, a thick wad of paper helps to keep out the wind. When choosing goggles, get a pair with a wide field of vision, so that you can see things out of the corner of your eye, like these. And quite apart from the obvious protection in an emergency, a well-made protective helmet keeps you warm and dry. For safety and comfort, this type of headgear is the choice of the expert. Motorcycles, if in good condition, aren't difficult to start if you know how. Don't kick away like this. Get an expert to teach you the neck. First, see that the petrol's turned on at the tap and see that it's getting through to the carburetor by feeling the tickler. Switch on, in the case of coil ignition models, set the twist grip slightly open and give a good swinging kick. And when the engine's started, don't start off suddenly without warning or without looking. Look round and wait till it's safe. If it won't start on the Kickstarter, don't try pushing unless you've practiced first in a quiet spot. This shot's based on an actual incident where a machine ran away with its pusher and injured some pedestrians. By clear hand signals and correct positioning of his machine in the roadway, the expert rider always makes his intentions obvious. Other traffic is never left in doubt. I am going to turn to my right is this, with a glance to make sure that it's safe to turn. Not this. A vague signal like this is all too common and it's worse than useless. I am going to turn to my left is this. Not this. I am ready to be overtaken is this. Not this. I am going to slow down or stop is this, and this signal is very often used wrongly. Use it sparingly. Here's a case where it's useful. The rider's telling traffic behind that he's going to slow down unexpectedly. And at pedestrian crossings, it's a good thing to let other drivers and pedestrians know that you intend to slow down. But if you're pulling into the curb, this overtake signal is much more helpful. And this slowing down signal does not mean I am telling other drivers to slow down, as this young rider seems to think. There's no such signal. You'll notice that none of these signals in the highway code is an instruction to anyone else. They're all merely a signal of your intentions. That is the driver's intentions, not the passenger's. So please ask the passenger to leave all signals to you. But just giving a signal isn't the whole story of making a turn. Correct road positioning is equally important. Making a right turn, the experienced man filters to the crown of the road, or the right-hand side of the road in the case of a one-way street. Leaving the left of the road clear for other traffic which may want to go straight on. It's much the same with the left turn. Filter to the near side well in advance, a clear signal, and it all looks very easy. These novices, with their poor road positioning and no proper signal, leave other drivers in doubt as to what they intend to do.
At crossroads or road intersections of any kind, the seasoned rider's always on his guard. But it's not only the major junctions that call for care. These minor crossings, where there's nothing to indicate which is the major road, are often more dangerous. And it's worth noting that at places like this, the seasoned racing man is noticeably slower than the novice. And make allowance for the fact that a driver of a closed van can't always see you, such as at this kind of junction where the motorcycle's on the van driver's blind side. And don't be encouraged to cross just because a passerby waves you on. Always be cautious about signals given by pedestrians. They can't be relied on. And in these cases, the pedestrian's invariably missing if there's an accident. Hey you, come back. At this next crossing, watch those pedestrians. Their actions give a warning. Watch the pedestrians again, this is a better sign. A halt sign means halt. The law says you must come to a complete and absolute stop just before the line. And that's exactly what the wise rider does even when it seems unnecessary. Just slowing down isn't enough. And when you're on the major road, keep a sharp eye on all side roads. Other drivers don't always halt when they should. And blaming the other fellow isn't much help. You don't see the experts shouting and bawling like this. Now a few points about overtaking. You can always pick out the expert rider by the smooth, easy and polished way in which he overtakes slower vehicles, without the least inconvenience to them, to approaching traffic or to anyone behind. He waits for the right moment, glances behind, gives a warning, overtakes quickly and gets back to his own side. How is it that the seasoned rider always seems to know in advance whether it's safe to pass? Usually, as you can see from this slow motion shot, he positions his machine so as to get a better view of the road ahead, hanging back so he can see easily. Sometimes he can see by looking past the inside of the vehicle in front. In this case, he'd know that the bus is likely to pull out to pass the parked car. And sometimes he looks past the outside. Again, he'd know that the bus is going to pull out. Sometimes if the vehicle in front happens to be a saloon car, he can see through its windows. Another slow motion shot shows how the novice, by following too closely behind a big vehicle, can't possibly see the road ahead without pulling out, which is obviously dangerous on a narrower road like this. In any case, never ride too close on the heels of another vehicle. There's always the danger that it may pull up suddenly without warning. In emergencies, the driver has no time to signal. In this case, a child's run out after its ball. And here are a few examples of where not to overtake. On a blind bend. The brow of a hill. And shot. When you see a stream of vehicles overtaking a slower one, avoid following on. It may be safe for the leaders, but not safe for you. Watch out too when overtaking a parked vehicle. It may move off suddenly without a signal. The door may open unexpectedly. Someone may step out from behind. See how you can sometimes get a warning. Exhaust smoke shows that the engine started. Or the driver makes a movement to open his door. In this next shot, feet underneath that far lorry warn us that someone may step out from behind. Now let's take a look at when the boot's on the other foot, when we're being overtaken by faster traffic. In this respect, the motorcyclist has a fine reputation for courteous and considerate driving. You don't often come across a motorcyclist getting in the way by hugging the crown of the road, like this selfish solo rider. More often he knows exactly what's going on behind, either by frequent glances over his shoulder or by fitting a mirror. 
A badly parked vehicle can be a nuisance and a danger. And here again, the motorcyclist has a fine reputation for thoughtfulness and consideration, and usually remembers to pull off the road, like this. In spite of its small space, a badly parked solo can force other traffic to swerve out, sometimes with dangerous results. Even on a wide straight road, parking, and especially parking opposite another obstruction, is bad manners. Notice how the other vehicles have to veer outwards at this dangerous bottleneck. The experienced rider pulls off the road, even for a brief halt. In an emergency, parking on a disused footpath is better than staying on the roadway. But if you've a choice, use a proper lay-by. Incidentally, this shot also illustrates the spirit of comradeship for which motorcyclists are renowned. Now for a few points about taking a passenger. The insurance records show that the sidecar outfits the safest of all road vehicles. But if you drive one, here are a few points to remember. Make sure that the sidecar is fitted securely and properly lined up. Not like this one. When cornering, remember that if you tackle a left-hand bend too quickly with a light sidecar, the sidecar wheel may lift. So slow well down beforehand and accelerate round the bend well within your limits. Right hand bends are a lot easier, but don't run away with the idea that you can't overturn bike over sidecar. If you attempt a right hand bend too quickly, even the safe sidecar outfit can overturn. If you're going to take a friend on the back, don't attempt it without a proper seat. Fit a good make of pillion and strong footrests. This kind of dual seat safe and comfortable. In busy streets, built up area of any kind, and even when passing isolated houses in the country, watch out for children. No matter how careful the parents are, the day must come when every child ventures alone into the roadway. And with all the training in the world, a child forgets all caution when running after its ball, or when chased in a game. You can't rely on any help from the child. Its safety is entirely in your hands. And this question of child accidents is yet another where the motorcyclist has a fine record. If you examine the police reports analyzing 366 fatal accidents to children under 15, you'll see that only two were caused by motorcyclists. Two out of 366, although a fifth of the vehicles registered are motorcycles. But even this very creditable figure still represents two young lives that might have been saved. So remember that although as a motorcyclist you belong to a body with a first class reputation, you must spare no effort to maintain or even improve this fine record of child safety. When the road surface is wet, reduce speed. Learn to recognize the more slippery road surfaces. Watch out on wet stone sets, wood block surfaces, steel roadways, tram lines, roads covered with wet leaves, Patches of oil, even when the roads are dry. Oily roads are often found at bus stops. Loose gravel, especially on bends. All these treacherous surfaces call for extra care. So avoid sudden changes in direction or changes of speed. Hard braking on a bad surface will always lead to trouble. Even on a good surface, do all your braking with a machine vertical and traveling in a straight line. Apply both brakes smoothly and progressively. Change down and use your gears as a brake. And remember that the front brakes are the more important of the two. Ice-bound and snow-covered roads call for even more care. Freshly fallen snow isn't so bad, but where possible, pick a path where the snow hasn't been packed down into ice by the passage of vehicles. When the road's covered with smooth ice, it's often a good plan to ride in the gutter, where there's usually a certain amount of grit 
to provide some wheel grip. As soon as it begins to get dark, put on your lights. Try to be the first vehicle to light up rather than the last. Pilot light at first, but switch on to main beam as soon as you can't see perfectly. And this brings us to a very important warning to all riders. We've come across countless cases of vehicles running into the back of unlighted lorries. Cyclists with no rear lamp. Pedestrians often darkly clad. Don't let this happen. When you can't see, switch on more light. If you still can't see, reduce speed. Drive within the range of your lights. You'll often come across this sort of thing. And if you're not, it's no use saying he should have had a light. Some of them don't have lights, and you'll meet them eventually. You'll meet them eventually. In any case, there'll be no light showing here. Or here. So use your headlamp, but don't cause dazzle. Turn onto dipped beam when other vehicles approach. And when dipped, use even more care. If you're dazzled and can't see, slow down. Stop if necessary. Even when there's street lighting, watch these dark pools. If in doubt, switch on more light. So long as you're running on dipped beam, don't be put off if other drivers flash their lights. Remember the tragedy of Britain's worst road accident. When it's very late, don't treat deserted city streets with contempt. This is just the time when you'll meet people taking chances. And it's the time when the drunken driver's about. If you want to overtake at night, flick your light as a signal. If you don't want to overtake, dip the light to save dazzling the car driver through his mirror. And remember, you can't expect other drivers to respect hand signals if they can't be seen. These shots show the advantage of luminous gloves. And remember, if you see a light like this, it may be a solo motorcycle. But give it a wide berth, for it may be something much bigger, with one lamp faulty. At night, and especially in fog, these cat's eyes are a boon, and we wonder how we ever managed without them. On a foggy night, keep well to the left. You may meet vehicles astride the line. On a dark, foggy night, use a well-dipped headlamp and switch on that dipped headlamp if you strike fog during the daytime. Pilot lights are useless. You can't see them until long after you've seen the vehicle itself. This Solo has a pilot light on. Whereas this headlamp gives ample warning of approach long before the dark bulk would have come into view if it had a pilot light only. Motorcyclists have always been renowned for their courtesy and consideration, but here are a few reminders for the novice. If you hear the bell of a fire engine or ambulance, give the driver a clear road. Pull in and stop if necessary. This is the kind of view the ambulance driver often gets. How much easier for him if other traffic gives way. If you see a heavy lorry pulling up a hill, give way if need be. If you force the driver to slow down, he may have difficulty in getting his heavy load underway. In the same way, give way to horse-drawn traffic. When passing horses, make as little noise as possible so as not to startle them. And make allowances for the drivers of invalid carriages or anyone else in a difficulty. If you want to know the way, don't ask a point duty policeman. Find someone else to ask. Now a word about the other fellow. Do you ever stop to consider his point of view? You share the roads with 50 million others. Drivers, cyclists, pedestrians of all ages and all standards of intelligence and education. Some young and fit, others old or not so fit. All of us make mistakes sometimes, 
make allowances for theirs. This kind of fist shaking is the sign of a bad driver, one who's not yet learnt to be tolerant. How much nicer to see a wave and a friendly smile. And look at this case. Repeated horn blowing like this is illegal as well as ill-mannered. This is the type of rider who gets motorcyclists a bad name. Whereas this friendly consideration for an older man is in the true motorcycling tradition. We can't all be experts, so let's make allowances. One final word. We've tried to cram the experience of a million miles into a brief 40-minute film, but don't let that give you the idea that there's anything complicated or difficult about motorcycling. And although we've faked a few crashes to illustrate some of our points, we repeat that a motorcycle is not, in itself, a dangerous vehicle. Inevitably, there are a few dangerous riders, just as there are dangerous drivers of cars and lorries, which are bigger, and therefore more lethal, vehicles. But by applying a little care and thoughtfulness and common sense, you'll find motorcycling a safe, healthy and economical means of transport. Good luck and safe motorcycling.